Two Worlds, One Family by Dragon Translator Chapter 31 He did it, didn't he? I'm going. Hiccup stared at Astrid and sighed. He then turned to Fishlegs, the twins, and snarled out. Help Gobber, he said, smiling when all the teens and their dragons nodded their heads. Gobber rambled forward. Lad, are you sure you want me here? Please, Hiccup said. You've been acting chief before. Mildy will not like that we took these flowers. I need you to stop him but if he starts to run. Gobber grunted. Aight, lad. You keep safe, all of you. Dem squadrons ain't always nice. Hiccup smiled and looked back at the ship. Stormfly and Toothless stood at opposite ends of the deck, keeping the keel level and keeping them away from the baskets near the mast. Sharp Short stood on Toothless's back for some reason. Gida, Astrid, Brynja, Hawk and the helmsman, Sven, took to the deck. All but Gida had their weapons secured in their respective holsters. Gida lifted her hands and lightning curled around them before disappearing. Gobba grunted, still be careful, the blacksmith said, patting Hiccup's left shoulder. Hiccup nodded before boarding the ship. Brynja and Hawk caught the tether ropes, tossed by Mulch and Bucket. Gobba, Mulch and Bucket shoved the bow of the ship, backing it away from the dock. They walked along to the edge of the dock. The ship drifted. Sven worked the rudder as Brynja and Hawk worked a couple of oars to turn the ship away from the island. Shadowfire dove off the cliff above the docks. He beat his wings, rising and banking around and behind the ship. Slowing to hover, he flapped his wings. The sails filled. The ship shot forward. Sven whistled but kept the keel level. As soon as they passed the Guardians, they were too far from Shadowfire to benefit from his wing flaps. The ship slowed down. Hiccup looked up as the bigger dragon flew ahead. A smile crossed his face. Shadowfire dove, rose, spun, and in general flew as if he were having the time of his life. Though he kept near the ship, besides always passing over it. He is having fun, Astrid said. Yeah, Hiccup said. He noticed Gida standing by the side of the ship. She was not watching her son, but was leaning against the edge of the ship watching the water churned up by the ship's passing. He frowned, deciding to find out something that had been bothering him since the young Zibbleback found the island. Mildew took the boats and clawed up the Great Hall, didn't he? Gobba? Hiccup asked, leaning against the rail beside her. Gida was silent for several heartbeats, then sighed. Yes. Hiccup clenched his fists. Did we ever learn in the tale, you know? Gida took several deep breaths. You would have found fake zibble back legs and a monstrous nightmare claws while fixing a hole in Mildew's roof. Why would I be fixing a hole in Mildew's roof? Hiccup asked as Astrid moved to lean against the rail to his left. You did a trust exercise with the other riders, Gida said, now looking up at her son as he flew by. They were to fall off their dragons and trust the dragon to catch them. You went first and Toothless caught you. You told Fishlegs to go next, but he refused. Snotlau arrogantly decided to show him how it was done. He slid off Hookfang, for Hookfang did not go after him at first. Astro told him to go, but it wasn't until he looked at you and Toothless that he actually went after Snotlau. They were too low and too fast and crashed into Mildew's hut. So why wasn't Snotlau fixing the roof? Astro asked. Gira shrugged. Stoic ordered all the riders to fix the roof without their dragons. Hiccup was the only one who showed to have attempted. When was I? Astrid asked. I don't know. It didn't say. Hiccup hummed. Gida, when you arrived and we returned to Berg after that patrol, you and Shadowfire did not seem surprised by the other dragons using the village as a place to relieve themselves. The images you all saw in my home were the first created of your tale, Hiccup but they were not the only ones. They continued in shorter forms. The dragons were in the first of those shown. By the way, they're talking about the TV show here. How did we resolve it without the common tongue and the dragons declaring Hiccup their alpha? Astrid said. Gida tilted her head. Stoic ordered Hiccup to deal with the dragons. 
but it wasn't until after Hiccup was knocked down a hill by Stampede and Gronkle that the rest of you teens joined him in the effort. She looked over at Astrid. And it wasn't until you said the rest of you should help him. Astrid frowned. We went back to ignoring Hiccup and... Astrid frowned. We went back to ignoring Hiccup and taking him for granted, she asked in a small voice. Gida turned her gaze back to the water and sighed. In the tale I know, the moment the shield was first shown, Ruff asked what had happened to Hiccup. Astrid, you said in a rather dreamy and breathless voice, Who cares? Did they get anything right? Astrid growled, fisting her hands, slamming down on the railing of the ship. I watched him almost die. I aided Stoic and my mum in caring for him while he recovered. Why would I go back to acting like he didn't matter to me? I don't know, Gida whispered. At the time, those shorter forms of your tale were being shown. We still believed they were made up. That they were just tales told to entertain, and not actual moments of the past. Some questioned the logic behind certain actions and events, but ultimately, they were accepted as just part of a story. Then Burke was rediscovered, and we found out they were simplified versions of history. Rediscovered? Hiccup asked, frowning. This place in my time has treacherous waters at the borders, and a cold fog that can disorientate even the most experienced ship's captain. Not many go here on purpose, and definitely not deep into the area. A ship going to another kingdom was thrown off course due to a violent storm. Another hazard this area has. They found Burke while looking for a place to hold up and do some small repairs to their ships. Were there still people living on the island? Hiccup asked. There was, and still is, Gida smiled. Your tribe is strong, Hiccup. It's your tribe too, Hiccup said. You and your family are part of the tribe now, Gida. Gida giggled. Thanks. Always wanted to know I was hairy and a hooligan. Astrid snorted. Toothless gave a warbled laugh. Sharpshot chirped and chittered. Stormfly chittered. Brynja, Hawk and Sven snickered. Hiccup just stared at Gida and then shook his head. Gida laughed. Gida, Hiccup began into that silence that fell. You told my father that the one who clawed up the hall did so to make Dad get rid of the dragons. What else happened? And did Dad get rid of them? Gida stilled, staring at the water again. She took a deep breath. After the hall was damaged, Mildew upped his game. He tricked Toothless into going into the armory, which was rigged to blow. Toothless got out before the blast, but a villager saw him leave and told everyone Toothless was to blame. St Stoic ordered all dragons off the island and made you leave them on Dragon Island. As if I would blow up a den in the nest now, Toothless said. Dragons and humans could not talk in the tale I know, Toothless, Gida said. And the tales had the dragons acting more like animals than the sentient beings they are. By the time the armory blew, the boots had already been taken and destroyed. The hall had been clawed up. The food storage was blown up by fighting dragons. And food all over was taken by dragons. Including you. We don't take food from nestmates, Stormfly said. I know, Gida said. That was something people did question. Especially since we knew dragons could speak if a magic wielder allowed them to unlock the human's ability to hear and understand them. Gida shrugged. Still, we thought the tales just stories, so no one really gave them all that much thought. How'd we get the dragons back? Hiccup asked. Alvin invaded right after you all got back from Dragon Island. Astrid hissed. No weapons and no dragons, she said. Right, Gida said. Nothing to really stop them. Stoic ordered most of the village to the caves, and he and several others went to the head of the invaders as best as they could in the forests. Did they? Hawk asked, walking up. Hiccup gave himself up. Silence fell then. Toothless and Sharpshot started growling. Gida looked over. Easy, boys, she said. 
He did so in order to trick Alvin into taking him to Dragon Island to get Toothless back. The dragon's growls lowered, but did not go away. Hiccup moved and walked over to run his hands along the top of both of their heads. I would do it a thousand times, guys, if it meant getting everyone I care about was safe. That includes you both. Toothless grunted but curled into Hiccup's frame. Sharp Sharp moved closer, crawling onto Hiccup's shoulders so he could nuzzle against Hiccup. Astrid walked over and wrapped her arms around both Hiccup and Toothless, making sure Sharp Sharp was in the hug as well. Hiccup felt the ship rock a bit and then blinked when Stormfly's wing fell upon around them. Uh, Hiccup said, noticing the ship was not tipping as he thought it would. Shadowfire's holding the stern down, Gida said. While flying? Hiccup asked, though he could not see to verify for himself. Stormfly's bulk was in the way. I am good at this flying thing, Alpha, Shadowfire said. Show off. Toothless muttered. End of chapter. Hi guys, hope you enjoyed this. So yes, they occasionally do mention the TV show, but they mainly refer to them as images or tales, which is understandable. And because Gira has been told not to tell too much, it doesn't really take away from the story that much. They're still very much in this time period rather than our own. And yeah, yeah, I just like that big dragon cuddle and Astrid saying, what, they got everything wrong? I would never do that take up. A brilliant way to clap back against writers who might not have understood the character as well. Anyway, you guys know the drill. Like, comment and subscribe and hit that bell to get notified for whenever I upload a new video. Have a good day, night or whatever time zone you're in. Bye my guys, girls and non-binary pals. I'll see you in another video. Take care.